So uh, what is Eupraxia standing for? It stands for European Plasma Ex Research Accelerator with Excellence in Applications. Now, when we started, some UK colleagues said, it sounds like a disease. I have Eupraxia. <laughs> and actually, it's even a medical term. Eupraxia is also, it's not a disease. It's actually something good. It's your ability in the body to, to have coherent movement. So all your body parts should move together. And this is actually a theme about eupraxia. Uh, it's, uh, science is not just about finding things and understanding things. It's often also about working together. It's like in a football uh, team. Uh, if everybody is a star, it doesn't mean you win the, 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 the world championship. And uh, you, England is doing pretty well uh, this time, I must say. Germany, <laughs> probably we lost, we lost our ability to <laughs> this time to to work together. Now, um, uh, as I say, this is a European project, and um, it started about uh, two and a half years ago, so we are in the third year. We will finish in another uh, one and a half years, and it brings together big science labs, photon science, particle physics, uh, laser laboratories, high-power lasers, you heard about some of them, International laboratories, CERN and ELI, are connected through associate partners. Universities, accelerator research, plasma, lasers, so all the things you heard about is bringing together here. Don't want to uh, go into uh, details. In the end, we are about 125 scientists who try to really invent and together work out this next uh, technology, piece of technology that we want to build in Europe. So this is uh, many of us meeting here uh, in Liverpool, close to university. Uh, of course, it's beautiful weather here. We must say it's almost too warm for us. Uh, but I understand it's not always like that in Liverpool, the weather. Uh, we work together. And uh, if you see here, there's about 40 institutes, 12 countries, three continents working together. It's centered in Europe because we are a European project. And if you look at this map, one thing I always point out is, uh, actually, you don't even see Germany in there. It's too small. And even Europe is pretty small. So we are a part of a big world, which is developing rapidly. And uh, here in Europe, we, we are occupying a nice piece of, of, of the planet, but it's not, it's not the biggest. So we, we don't rule the world. It's, it's really something where we, we work together. We have a good chance to keep leadership and defend our wealth. But if we find, let's see all these dots, which are all different countries and institutes, if we all would work against each other, it's sure that we will have to buy our accelerators in the future from China, from Japan. And we are, they are part of us, so we work together with them. But you look uh, how big and how many people, not shown here, live there. US, of course, uh, also has some, some important uh, laboratories involved. And you see some red dots there. So working together is an important part of science, like in a football team. If we don't work together, we will, we will not win, uh, and we might even lose. So um, now, as I'm from Hamburg, uh, actually, uh, now it's, I have some reaction time. This is Hamburg. Uh, actually, it's not so, it's not so different from Liverpool. So you should visit us in Hamburg. If you come, uh, if you're a fan of culture, you go to the Elb Philharmonie, uh, or if you're fans of, of, of uh, uh, airplanes, you, go to, you can visit the Airbus company. Actually, this is a, the, um, uh, uh, the airport just owned by the company Airbus. Uh, they are building some of these big planes, like A380 over here, also in a European enterprise. Uh, of course, if you come to partying, you would go somewhere here to the Reeperbahn, where the Beatles also went, so you'll find a nice Beatles place as well, and some statues, uh, so it will remind you of Liverpool, and a lot of people having fun. And, of course, uh, you also will find a lot of uh, scientists having fun here. Uh, actually, here is one of, our, uh, the, it's one of the biggest accelerator laboratories in, in Europe. Uh, DESY is the biggest one in Germany, and um, as you see, we have recently built a European x -fail. So the accelerators got so big, they don't fit on our side anymore. So we point outwards to, to the next village outside of Hamburg. 
so if you come, you will find a of, lot of these synchrotron sources you saw before here on this campus, and then a big one, a kilometer long device pointing outwards. So um, if you zoom in now here, what you would see is this is our uh, DESI, uh, German uh, Accelerator Center. You see some storage rings indicated by these uh, curved buildings. And there's a long, big accelerator going there. And what we work on together, and this is what motivates us a lot in Hamburg, of course, we build these big accelerators, but we also want to shrink down uh, this, this piece of the accelerator. We can't shrink everything, but we want to shrink this accelerator piece into something like this. And you heard from Seri, it's, it's really a beautiful technology um, of uh, offering really much smaller footprint. And then, of course, if we can shrink it down, this thing, to something like this, we can fit many new accelerators on, on, on our site. And it gets so small that we might even get it small enough to implant it into human bodies. So uh, you might have even accelerators at some point implanted because we heard about destroying cancer cells. If we shrink down accelerators enough, we can put it just close to the tumor. So we don't have to irradiate um, a healthy tissue. And it's not a joke, it's not just science fiction. This is actually funded by a Silicon Valley uh, billionaire who gives uh, one million dollars to Hamburg. So we join this work on implantable uh, small accelerators. So small is good, small is beautiful. So in some number of years, we might not have 30,000 accelerators, but 300,000 or even 3 million. Maybe you even have an accelerator in your pocket at some point. So this is how it looks like. You saw that we have a laser, we have this. It's beautifully explained before. We send in a laser pulse, uh, and what we get out, we get a laser pulse and an electron beam. Pretty small, as you see, it's really compact. This is one of our big accelerators, so 100 meters of this thing will do the same as this little piece of accelerator. So it's really small and compact, as Harry explained. And you see the potential, maybe you don't see it immediately, but you feel it. Having these small things, uh, you can imagine all kinds of applications the storing tumor cells, um, uh, irradiating um, bridges, uh, and, and a lot of other applications. So, of course, this will also be much cheaper. Being cheaper means many more scientists looking into all these viruses, bacteria, plants. We heard about the plants, so we have to hurry up. We have to analyze them all before they disappear. Of course, better we protect them that they don't disappear. <laughs> But if we can't protect everything, we better study it. So having many, many more accelerators and small and, and less expensive will allow us to have more knowledge. So science will progress fast, and uh, we all profit from that. I also show this UK a pioneering result, uh, which was already shown by Seri, uh, this picture. But I like also this comparison, where you see this is a laser plasma-based thing. And this is from other sources, and you see laser plasma is not just cheaper and smaller, it can also be better. And this, of course, is important. You want something that also works well and not is, just, uh, not, is not only small. So um, that's why we came together in Europe. We said, would it not be reasonable to reap the benefits of innovative laser plasma and accelerator technology also in Europe for our science, industry, and society? The lasers, for example, which are used for most of these studies worldwide are built in France. Some of them also in UK, some of them in, in, in Germany. So Europe is leading in producing the technology to make these accelerators. So why don't we work together to, to keep the leadership and uh, also create high, well-paid jobs for our young people? Because you, you have seen, uh, you know about the IT. This creates a lot of jobs. Uh, we want to have uh, developed this technology, create the jobs in Europe. This is why we get together. Edupraxia is essentially trying to build one step towards the, the real applications in Europe um, in the 2020s. So maybe if you stay tuned in seven years, you will hear about Eupraxia inaugurated. And you can say, I, I have seen it seven years ago in Liverpool when these guys were still uh, dreaming uh, about this thing. And then in the 40s, when you all will be earning good money, hopefully, in well-paid jobs, uh, there might be all kinds of applications, medical, industrial, plasma-based FEAs, linear collider, and a lot more people might know about accelerators if our vision of going from 30,000 to 300,000 accelerators uh, becomes true, of course, uh, many more people will get in contact with particle accelerators. I just point out, 90 years ago, we had one IF-based accelerator in all Europe. 
So this is just some leaflet beautifully prepared here in Liverpool by the team of Carsten. So they will find all kinds of information about that. It will look something like this. So we are putting together the concept. It's clear that this is something which is not fitting on stage yet. So we go in steps. We, don't, we cannot miniaturize it in one step. We go in a few steps, like the first mobile phones. Maybe you see a movie from the 70s or 80s. The guy opens the trunk, and inside is the mobile phone, the car phone, <laughs> which took the whole trunk. But now you have it in your pocket. So we have to go in steps. Uh, we first miniaturize to something which is, let's say, uh, 10 times shorter than the conventional still much shorter. It should be short enough that it fits in a hospital parking lot. We went to Copenhagen, we had a talk there, so we showed, looked at, told them, look, this parking lot or there will easily fit this facility. I think they will not build it there, but of course hospitals uh, would use facilities uh, that are fitting in, on their, on their, on their uh, footprint. If we tell them, now we bring an accelerator which is three kilometers long, They will, they will throw us out. If we say we need a parking lot to build some nice machine which saves people, um, they might be much more interested. So being small has a lot of advantages. Uh, this is an impression from Frascat in Italy. They are proposing to build Eupraxia. Uh, uh, they will sacrifice a tennis court for, for putting it on the tennis court. Uh, so maybe Eupraxia will be built in Italy, but maybe also in, in Germany or UK or, or France. Final site and implementation is being discussed, but it's very good to see these uh, very attractive proposals. And Frascati, good wine, close to Rome, so if you're interested in an ancient culture, so of course go to science, do your studies, uh, and then you might go to Italy. Uh, a few years to learn more about science, uh, drink some wine and uh, help us building an accelerator or to Germany or to France, for example. Now I want to uh, finish with a citation. Yesterday we were walking the, uh, Liverpool. Uh, my eye got caught by the, Liv by the John Lennon bar, of course. Uh, Beatles were in Hamburg as well, so we are a lot of fans of, of John Lennon. And this citation they put up there on the John Lennon bar, and it's, it's really summarizing quite a bit what we are doing, not just excellent science and being very good. Uh, of course, you always try to be very good, but we have tried to work together. And this citation here, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. Uh, a dream you dream together is reality. This is what really summarizes Eupraxia. So we got our new Liverpool motto now. Thank you very much uh, for Liverpool and your attention. Thank you.